First, we'll start with the basics. The Taser devices use a replaceable cartridge that contains the probes, wires, and nitrogen propulsion system, allowing you to reload everything needed to fire another shot. And the Taser cartridges are reversible, so they can go in either way. One important word on cartridges, be sure you never place your fingers in front of the cartridge doors. When loading, hold the cartridge by the buttons on the sides. When unloading, do the same. Note, if you are unloading a fresh, unfired cartridge, the release buttons will be much stiffer than after the cartridge has been fired. This is because the wires inside the cartridge hold the cartridge release tabs firmly in place, which helps keep the cartridge locked firmly in place through the firing process. If you have any difficulty in removing the cartridge by simply pressing on the buttons with one hand, try using this two-handed technique. While making sure the safety is in the unarmed position, hold the unit with the cartridge facing in a safe direction. Then, using two hands, press with both thumbs on either side of the release buttons to remove the cartridge. Taser devices also have a powerful backup defense system. If the probes miss the target, they can be used in contact stun mode by touching the front of the device to the intended target and discharging the electric impulses into them. Because the front of the Taser device has live electrodes for this contact stun feature, it is important that you keep your fingers away from the front of the device at all times, whenever the Taser is armed. The Taser systems are not classified as a firearm and can be carried in over 40 states without special permit. Check your state and local laws for details. Even though the Taser devices are designed as safer personal defense alternatives, they are powerful weapons and must be handled cautiously and with respect. For safety purposes, handle the Taser device as you would handle a firearm and follow these basic safety guidelines. Never point the Taser device at anything you don't intend to shoot. Do not power up the Taser device until pointed in a safe direction. This would typically be towards the intended legally justifiable target. Never place your finger in the trigger unless lawful firing is imminent. Do not shine the laser sight into anyone's eyes, including animals. Laser light can cause eye damage if directed into eyes for prolonged periods of time. Avoid aiming the taser device toward anyone's eyes or face. Probe shot into the eyes can cause serious injuries. Never place your hand in front of the taser cartridge or cartridge bay, especially when changing the cartridge. The Taser C2 consists of two main systems, the Taser device that contains all the electrical and power components necessary to operate the C2, and the Taser cartridge that contains the compressed nitrogen, probes, and wires. Let's take a look at the different components of these two systems. Lithium power magazine, or LPM, containing two 3-volt photocells, LPM release button, safety cover, trigger, LED indicator light, low intensity lights, optional laser sight, taser C2 cartridge, blast door, taser cartridge release buttons. First, let's take a more detailed look at the taser device. The lithium power magazine, or LPM, is a power source for the taser C2. It has a 10-year shelf life. It contains two 3-volt photolithium energy cells. The LPM can operate the taser C2 for over 25 minutes of continuous firing or over 50 firings of the full 30-second discharge cycle. Power down the C2 by placing the safety cover in the closed position. Remove the taser cartridge if there is one in place. Always make sure your taser device is not loaded with the cartridge before changing the LPM. Depress the LPM release buttons. Remove the LPM and immediately replace it with a new LPM. At this point, we are going to get ready to activate your C2. Once your Taser C2 is activated, it can emit electrical current discharge, Taser pulses, when you touch the trigger. These pulses will fire a cartridge if one is loaded. Hence, we want to make sure you have unloaded your C2 before attempting activation. Verify that your C2 is unloaded and that the cartridge bay in the front of the device is unloaded. The electrical pulses emitted from the Taser C2 not only fire the cartridges, but they can deliver an electrical stunt to anyone who comes in contact with the front of the Taser C2. As a matter of safe practice, make sure you keep your fingers and any other body parts away from the front of the Taser C2 anytime the safety cover is back in the armed position. You can tell that your Taser C2 has not yet been activated because the LED indicator will be red when you pull back the safety slide. 
Here are what the different LED indicator codes are. Red indicates the Taser C2 is locked and cannot be activated until you complete a background check and enter the activation code. A flashing red light will indicate an error when you are entering the activation code. Either you entered the wrong code or you entered a digit greater than 9 in which the system cannot accept. The LED will flash green when you have successfully entered the activation code. It will flash for 30 seconds during which time you cannot fire the unit. This is a safeguard against accidental activation after you have entered the activation code. Green indicates that your Taser C2 is live, has a fresh lithium power magazine battery system, and is ready to fire. Yellow indicates that your Taser C2 is live, but the lithium power magazine battery system is getting low and needs to be replaced. Your system should still fire, but it would be prudent to replace the LPM battery with a new one as soon as you can. Now you will activate your Taser C2. First, you should locate the serial number on your Taser C2. The serial number is located on the barcoded label on the bottom of the device. You will need this serial number to complete your background check and receive the activation code. In addition to the serial number of your Taser device, you will need your social security number and will need to provide the last four digits along with your full name for identification purposes. Go online to taser.com to complete your background check. If you cannot get online, you can call this toll-free number. We recommend using the online activation as it includes step-by-step -step instructions. Please pause this video while you complete the background check. Hit the play button when you have received your activation code and are ready to continue. Before entering the activation code, check again to make sure your unit is unloaded. Keep the front of your taser device away from your fingers and body parts at all times. To enter the activation code, you will slide open the safety cover and click the trigger the number of times represented by the first digit in your code then close the cover to register the number. Then, open the cover to enter the second number and click the trigger the number of times represented by the second digit. Close the cover to register the second digit and continue until you have entered your entire code. For example, if your code is 123, you will start by opening your safety cover. You would click the trigger button once, then close the safety cover to enter the number 1. You would then open the cover, click the trigger twice, and close the cover to register the number 2. Then open the cover and click the trigger three times to enter the number 3. If at any time you click the trigger more than nine times, the unit will register an error by flashing the LED red. You will then have to start over. If you enter the wrong code, the LED will flash red. If at any point you have made a mistake and need to start over, Click the trigger more than nine times until the LED flashes red. Once the LED has flashed red, close the safety cover and start over. Once you have successfully entered the activation code, the LED will flash green to indicate you have successfully activated your taser. When the LED stops flashing, you can arm and use your taser device. Treat it with care. The safety cover controls the power to the C2. The Taser C2 is powered down by placing the safety cover in the closed position. Placing the safety cover in the open position and exposing the trigger button powers up the C2. Powering up the C2 activates the laser and lights on models that include these options. Now let's take a look at the Taser cartridge system. The Taser cartridge contains the cartridge release buttons, blast doors, two electrodes, a primer charge, a non-flammable nitrogen capsule, two probes, two 15-foot wires, and aphid tags. When the C2 is powered up and the trigger is depressed, the primer charge forces the nitrogen capsule onto a puncture pin that releases the compressed nitrogen, which then propels the two probes out at approximately 160 feet per second. The probes knock the blast doors off as they leave the cartridge. The probes are connected to the C2 by two 15-foot wires that are used to conduct the taser pulses to the target. The wires are steel with insulated coating. The wires can break easily if stepped on or pulled. Inadvertent contact with wires or probes during discharge can result in a shock if you break the wires. 
You must avoid the wires while escaping so you don't disconnect the assailant from the C2. The C2 will automatically activate a 30 second cycle when the unit is powered up and the trigger is depressed. The cycle can be stopped at any time by putting the safety cover in the closed position and powering down the C2. Now, take your Taser C2 and practice using the trigger and safety. Make sure your Taser C2 is unloaded, pointed in a safe direction, and don't point it towards anyone's face or eyes, especially if your unit has the optional laser sight. And make sure your fingers are away from the front. Now, power it up and pull the trigger. After a second or two, close the safety cover to power down the C2. The top probe will come out straight and will impact the target within a few inches of the laser. The probes will only travel up to 15 feet. The bottom probe comes out at an 8 degree downward angle. It is important to keep the taser device vertical so the bottom probe doesn't miss the target. The rule of thumb for probe spread is one foot of spread for every seven feet of travel. Both probes must contact the target to be effective. However, if one probe misses, you can still make contact with the front of the taser device to complete the circuit and repel an assailant. When a taser cartridge is fired, it disperses 20 to 30 identification tags called aphids. These tags are printed with the serial number of the cartridge and can be used to determine who purchased the cartridge. This makes Taser personal protection devices the only easily traceable weapons in existence. If a Taser device is ever used in a criminal act, Taser International can provide law enforcement with the name of the person who purchased the cartridge. Taser International will release this information to law enforcement agencies conducting an investigation.